Okay, scholars, take a look at the free body force diagrams paper. If you haven't yet, pause and read the directions. So we want to draw vectors to represent velocity and force. We see the first case is a bowling ball at rest. The velocity equals zero. What are the forces acting on this bowling ball? We know that gravity is pulling, um, the earth is pulling down. So we have the force of gravity. And we also know that there's going to be an upward force, which is the, the normal force. So we can also draw an upward force, F normal. Notice that these two forces are the same magnitude. And they're in opposite direction. They're canceling each other out. They should both be drawn the same length because they are the same magnitude. And once we've identified the forces, then I'd like you to do um, the part on the bottom. Velocity, is it to the left, to the right, or is there no velocity? We can see that there is no velocity. How about acceleration? Is it to the left, to the right, or is there no acceleration? This ball is at rest and staying at rest, so there is no acceleration. And the net force, is it to the left or to the right, or is it zero? We can see here that these two forces cancel each other out, so the net force is zero. There are no other forces acting on this ball, so we've done a complete job of identifying all the forces. Let's go to the next example. Bowling ball rolling to the right with constant velocity, no resistive forces. We're going to draw in a vector to show the velocity. I'll use green for that. Try that again. So there's the velocity. We don't know how fast it's going, but we do know the direction. And here's the... Okay, so what force is directing on it? Just as before, we have gravity exerting a downward force. And we have the floor, or the ground, exerting an upward normal force. What other forces are acting on this? We're told that there are no resistive forces, so there is no friction. Now that's sort of a hypothetical situation, but the reason I said no resistive forces is I want you to understand that just because the ball is moving to the right, that doesn't mean that there is a force acting on it to make it move to the right. There was at some point a force that would have caused it to accelerate from rest so that it is now moving. But once it's moving, that force can be eliminated and the ball will continue to, ro to roll at that constant velocity. So we're done here. We've identified the forces. There are only two of them. And we can then go to the bottom part here. Velocity is to the right. Acceleration, well, it's going with constant velocity. So we know the acceleration is zero. And the net force, well, these are the only two forces acting on it. They're balanced, canceling each other out. The net force is zero. Um, we will we'll do one more here. Bowling ball, falling on the moon, no air resistance. So, downward force of gravity. And what other forces are acting on the ball? There is no air resistance. There, um, so that's it. This ball is free falling. Velocity is downward. We didn't draw yet the velocity vector. So we can draw downward force V. Velocity is therefore downward. Acceleration. Um, the ball is moving downward and it's getting faster. So the acceleration is downward. The net force is downward. The only force present is the force of gravity. 
So in this case, the force of gravity is the whole net force, and it's also downward. So scroll down, let's take a look at the next example. Bowling ball immediately after being tossed upward on the moon. So which direction is it? What direction is the velocity? Going down or up? It was tossed upward. So immediately after being tossed upward, it's still going to be moving upward. So there's velocity. And what are the forces acting on it? Is gravity acting on it? Yes. Which way is gravity acting on it? Is gravity pulling down on it or pushing up on it? Gravity is pulling down on it. Force of gravity. What other forces are acting on this ball? Are there other forces acting on the ball? Is there air resistance? No, we're on the moon. Is there an upward force acting on the ball to make it go up? No. At one point, there was, when the ball was being held in someone's hand, and then they tossed the ball up. While the ball was in their hand, then there was an upward force exerted by their hand. But once it left their hand, there was no longer an upward force. And the ball continues to move up because of its inertia. At some point, gravity does decelerate it until it finally comes to the top and then begins to fall back down. But that's it. We've identified that gravity is the only force acting on this ball after it's been tossed. So underneath here, we can say the velocity is upward. The acceleration is, well, let's see here. It's moving upward, but getting slower. That means upward velocity, downward acceleration. The net force, well, again, like the last one, we only have one force. And that force is down, so the net force is down. You may notice a pattern between acceleration and net force. If you look at the one we just did, they were both down. If you look at the example we did um, previously, they were both in the downward direction. And in the first two examples, the acceleration was zero because the net force was zero. So there is this intimate connection between net force and acceleration. Whatever direction the net force is, that's the direction the object will be accelerating. And if there is no net force, there will be no acceleration. I'm going to come down and do one more example for you. Elevator moving up with increasing speed. Let's draw in the velocity vector. Going up. And what are the forces acting on this elevator? The elevator has mass. The Earth will be pulling down on it. So there is a downward force of gravity. If that were the only force, this elevator would be free falling. Not a happy situation. But there is another force present. It is the tension force of the cable pulling up on the elevator. We can label this force of tension. So is this force of tension going to be greater or less than or the same as the force of gravity? It's an elevator moving up with increasing speed. So it is accelerating as it's moving up. That means there must be more force of tension pulling it up than there is gravity pulling it down. So we're going to draw this vector for tension force longer than the vector for force of gravity. Are there other forces present? Um, we're kind of we're ignoring air resistance. Elevators do experience air resistance. So, but we're going to ignore that for now. Um, so. What do we have here? Velocity is upward. Acceleration is, hmm, it's moving up, it's getting faster. That means upward acceleration. And the net force, we have a stronger force up than we do down, so the net force is up. Notice again that acceleration and net force are both in the same direction. If you did include air resistance, by no means would it be wrong. And 
I'll add that in just in case you were thinking along that line. I want to want to um, validate your thoughts on that. If it's moving up, what direction would the air resistance be? The air resistance would be acting down on it, attempting to slow it down. So we could add in here oop, F air resistance. Okay. So I did it in orange because you may or may not have included it. It'd be okay. I would like you to try the rest on your own and answer the questions on the bottom.